Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live and uh, New World Order with its own One World Religion. Going to be getting into a breaking story here that is coming out of uh, the Middle East here. Uh, but before we go into this, let me just real, real quick mention to you guys something that I'm very much aware of. Uh, but I wanted to bring it to your attention. So much has been going on with Russia and the buildup of forces in Ukraine. But not only there... I got a lot of emails from you guys about uh, the NATO summit that was going on in Poland. Yes, very much was aware of that. In fact, I was going to try to get into there. Uh, the border zone, they were searching every car, even from the European Union. And the reason being, not just because Barack Obama was there, but because every single e, uh, EU member, practically, and NATO members were actually there in Poland uh, to come together, to bring their militaries together, to make a vote, to make a decision, which they did pass it, in order to put more military troops there all over Russia's border there. It is basically a threat to Russia to let them know you either obey what we want or you'll face the consequences. I think that's what it really comes down to. Anyway, this broadcast is not going to be a long time there. I've got something going on in my left ear here about to drive me nuts tonight and uh, doing everything natural I possibly can, though. So uh, pray for me and let me go right into this because it's very serious, guys. Uh, CNN. Uh, actually published this article that you guys are well aware of, Israel-Turkey strike a deal to normalize ties, okay? Uh, by the way, that ear trouble that I'm dealing with is affecting my jaw, my speech, everything. So, uh, But anyway, in this article right here, this was one of the many articles that came out that the, uh, the agreement between Turkey and Israel uh, had suddenly been reached. It's like almost like overnight it just came out. How did, it, how did this happen? No one really even knows. It just happened. And, but the funny thing is, was uh, Netanyahu had went to Rome to actually meet uh, John Kerry in order to get the two-state solution all uh, restarted again. Which, by the way, he is now completely pro-two-state solution. But his own right-wing party, which, by the way, Rabbi Yehuda Glick is a part of, is totally against it. So when Rabbi Glick says that the two-state solution is over, from his standpoint and from the right-wing party, the Likud party, yes, it is over. But Netanyahu knows that a deal has been struck, and this time it's not a deal about a second state. I think it's a deal about the third temple. Let's take you into this a little bit. Israel-Turkey have reached a deal to normalize diplomatic relations six years after an Israeli raid on Gaza-bound flotilla left eight Turks and an American citizen on the Turkish uh, or, origin dead. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, Turkish Prime Minister uh, Ben Ali Yaldrim announced Monday that the deal set to be signed Tuesday includes a $20 million uh, compensation fund as well. All right, now, um, the fund is for the Turkish families and an eventual return of ambassadors and initial talks on a possible natural gas pipeline. Now, on the bottom line here, under the deal, Turkey will end uh, all criminal or civilian claims against Israeli uh, military personnel in the state of Israel following the 2010 Israeli raid on Gaza-bound Turkish aid flotilla that left nine people dead. Netanyahu said at a press conference in Rome where officials hammered out the agreement. And notice this right there. Got it in yellow on your screen for you. Netanyahu said at the press conference in Rome where officials hammered out the agreement. He just went there to sign it, guys. Officials had already done it. This is on CNN. Notice your date as well. June 26th, 2016. All right? Keep that really close. I told you guys when we did the broadcast not long ago, when this whole deal came up suddenly with Turkey and Israel, I said they're getting ready for the two-state, or not two-state, but the third temple. Because Turkey is a key player. And I kept talking to you about Adnan Akhtar, and now he is that key figure right there for the building of the third temple. And even though he is nothing but a, a, a sex cult leader, and that's his own friend, 
who is a journalist. We did, the, did a broadcast on a little while back that clearly exposes Adnan and Akhtar. But yet, my Jewish brothers and sisters, unfortunately, not the sisters, but the brothers, are going right involved with this man because he's their only hope, it seems, to get a third temple. But remember, he is a self-proclaimed Mahadi. I don't know if he's ever actually said it, but everybody around him knows it. Let's put it that way. On Israel Today, here, July 10th, another article comes out, 2016. A Muslim looking forward to the third temple. Isn't it weird? I mean, just the other day, I do a message for you guys. I really am exposing Adnan and Akhtar. I'll put a link to that video in the description here for those of you that didn't get to see it. But I expose everything about what's going on. How that he's been the link between him and the Pope of Rome. Uh, Pope Francis has read this man's books. Of course, the books are mostly forgeries from what I have been able to uh, determine uh, from information that is uh, available on the internet there about him. Uh, but anyway, it says July 10th, but the interesting thing is, is the meeting was not July 10th, it was June 22nd of 2016, that Adnan Akhtar is meeting a delegation of, uh, of Israelis as well as government officials from Israel, and even Christians. It's just interesting. And Muslims. Now, watch this. I put it in yellow, what I really want you to see from the article. On June 22, 2016, Rabbi Dove Lipman, a top officer from the World Zionist Organization, was among those attending the dinner, along with many Muslim Jews and Christian representatives. Who were the Christian representatives? Guys, I've not been able to figure it out. Uh, they have to be from the Catholic Church, though. That's the only thing I can figure out. All right, now, I know there have been prominent evangelicals that have met with this man as well. And all you got to do, I mean, we've done, the, we've done the, uh, the work on it already. This man, although he proclaims to, to be the Mahdi, uh, the Muslim uh, uh, equivalent of what the, the, the Jewish people believe for the coming of the Messiah, but the Muslims believe the Messiah and the Mahdi are, are, are two different ones altogether. Or... Maybe they believe it's the same, but they believe that uh, Jesus is uh, a true prophet. But who knows how they believe that Jesus is. Anyway, Israel Today brings this article out. But notice, so it was actually the meeting took place on June 22nd. It was during the Ramadan. Again, another iftar dinner being held, just like Rabbi Yehuda Glick attended the same thing. And again, I do believe 100%. When it comes to the Israeli people, they're blind. According to the book of Romans chapter 11, they're blinded for your sake, for the Gentiles' sake, until all the Gentiles come in. God will forgive them. God will help them. No different than Rabbi Yehuda Glick or anybody else, Rabbi Dove here, uh, as they call him, Rabbi Dove Lippman, any of the others, there's still mercy for the Jewish people because God knows their eyes have been blinded and they just do not understand what's going on. But this is a setup. And this is this man right here, Adnan Akhtar, I've said over and over and over, the Vatican needed this man because they need someone to point to him to be the Antichrist. And he is growing in fame like never before. Never before. You just wouldn't believe it. The following is a press release from, from the Turkish religious figure Adnan Akhtar, pictured center who recently hosted a number of Israeli Jewish epistles during a Ramadan and very interestingly expressed his anticipation for the restoration of the temple in Jerusalem. All right, but again, June 22nd, let's back up though. When did they get this deal signed here uh, for the relations between Turkey and Israel? Interesting, isn't it? June 26th. At least that's when the article broke, but it, was, it broke the very next day. In other words, right after the meeting, that Adnan and Akhtar had with Israeli officials, he already made sure the pressure was on Erdogan to reestablish the ties with Israel. He's the go-between man between the Muslims and the Jews, as the Pope of Rome is the go-between between the Catholics and the Jews. And these two men here are working together for the purpose of building the Third Temple. But it's not for Yeshua. Not for him at all. Okay, Pope visits Yad Vashem, calls for a two-state solution. Now, this was back on 2014. Guys, you already know about it. CBN News brought this out. All right, but I wanted to bring out 
one quote in this article, because I want you to see the links that are in between there. Because Rabbi Dov Lipman was there when the Pope was there. He was part of that meeting there as well. This is also, by the way, in 2014, this was uh, a little while, at, you know, he, remember earlier that year he had already came to Israel, held uh, his mass in the upper room there with his triple crown on to show that he was the king of Israel. Now he comes back with the red carpet all laid out for him, thanks to the Israeli government. And this time, Rabbi Dov Lipman told CBN News, Your holiness in the heart of the Middle of East, the turbulent and violent Middle East, where Christians are often persecuted, Israel is an island of tolerance. There's no way I'd call this man your holiness. There ain't no way. You know, Mr. Pope Francis, something like that? Yeah, I guess that would be fine. But your holiness? There's only one holy, and it ain't him. He says, we also hope he, he bask in the holiness of Jerusalem and also recognize the importance of the unified Jerusalem where there, there is access for all faiths to their places of worship. So he's already got a hand right in there with him. Now, I want to just show you something else. Though. He tells the Pope, he calls him your holiness. Now watch what happens here. Now this is on Adnan Akhtar's television program. He just released this two days ago, this interview. He says they're, they're introducing uh, Rabbi Dov Lipman. Okay. He, he, say, he says that he you know, served in the Knesset, etc. He goes on about that, writes columns for the Israeli media. Okay. He is an American-born citizen, by the way. He, he did Aliyah to Israel. All right. He says, now, now, wait a minute. Hang on. Oh, gosh. Hang on, guys. I'm sorry. Um, let's back up. Now, this is when Adnan Akhtar says, the future is very beautiful. We will see the promises of the Torah uh, being fulfilled. Um, okay, hang on just a second, guys. I'm sorry. I, I, got, I need to just let it roll, I guess. Let me, let me back up like this. I'm going to just have to do it over, guys. I apologize for that. I'll just try to read it as fast as I can as it goes along here. So I want you to see what happens after they introduce him right here. All right, because they go through this. He regularly writes columns for the Israeli media. All right, I want you to see how he greets Adnan and Akhtar. Welcome. Thank you very much for coming. I'm honored. I'm happy, very happy that you came. That's what Adnan says to him. Then he speaks back. It is in English. It is wonderful for me to be hosted by you. I've heard so much about you, your program, and your audience. Then he goes on and he states here, and it is an honor for me to be finally here and to be in your presence. I mean, this is just nuts, guys. Then he says, uh, of course, he says, we love you too and all this kind of stuff here, but uh, to be honored to be in your presence. I mean, he's elevating this man in his own words there. It's, it's terrible, guys. Now, the other thing is, too, is I want you to see this part here. This is where they're going to talk about the temple a little bit, just so you see it. Let's take a look at this as well. Um, oh, my apologies there. Let's get back to it. Okay. The future is very beautiful. We will see the promises of the Torah being fulfilled. We will see the beauties of the promise in the Quran being fulfilled. That's one of the most important things that we believe, that people from all faiths should be able to come together and see fulfilling other prophecies as, uh, uh, as one. We are children of God. There is no reason for us to be fighting with each other. We should be working together. We are about to see the beauty days promised to the prophet Abraham and to his children, okay? And, you know, this is just nuts, guys. All right, now here's one where he talks about the temple, and we'll kind of close with this one right here. And the temple of Jerusalem being in place where all the people from all nations can connect to God. Now, Adnan Akhtar is going to implicate here that the Muslims are going to build the temple. Watch what he says here. All right, now watch what he says. 
There is a little okay time left before the temple is built. We will also build the palace of Solomon. Let me, let me back that up, guys. Let me back it up. I apologize here. I'm not very good with working this thing like this. Let's, um, it's right here. I have to just read the entire thing because I'm not very good at making this thing work. Okay, it goes right here. Uh, all right. He says, there is a little time left before the temple is built. We will also build the palace of the prophet Solomon. Notice he says, we will build. We will rebuild both of them in the compliance with the original ones and the whole world will witness the be this beauty. We will find the Ark of the Covenant and bring it to the front of the temple. We will slaughter sacrifices there and their smell will reach Jericho. We will do certainly pray three times a day on our faith for the coming of the Messiah in our two biggest moments of the year. Now this is just absolutely insane. Here Adnan Akhtar is actually saying that they are going to build the third temple and not only that, he's going to build Solomon's palace. Now by the way, I have already seen in other broadcasts that he does that he's the one that's going to live inside of Solomon's palace. He claims to be the Mahdi, and he's the one that is supposed to live there. I mean, this is completely insane. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.